Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is theoretically going to be my setup and final configuration and installation of this, my godly streaming and capture system that I've been working on for quite a while now. And in fact, been working on all day today and I was hoping to be a little bit further along right now than I, than I am, but all that said, I, I've, I've got a, an event to go to tomorrow, so I'm gonna have to kind of cut it off here and share with you guys what I've gotten done so far. So basically, I started this off yesterday, and I started off by taking my system that's out in the garage, my existing streaming system, and pulling out my Blackmagic Intensity Pro out of that, reinstalling it in here to populate the final PCI Express slot. With that installed, I'm pretty much like maxed out as far as what is connected to the system. I have a 6950X processor that's installed up on the top. I have uh, the GTX 1080 Ti, of course, as well as the three capture cards, the input card for the 4K, the output for card for the 4K, and then of course the uh, 1080 in and out card that is down at the bottom. There's three different ways that I was gonna set up and test as far as how I'm gonna use this system. Uh, the first is going to be just directly capturing 4K high quality footage from my camera that I'm filming with right now, my Panasonic Lumix GH5, and then taking that footage and somehow getting it in, into a usable format so I can send it over to my editor, Joe, so he can actually edit it. The second thing that I wanted to do was set up OBS uh, so that I, have, I can have multiple cameras uh, coming in, uh, one of course via the 4K capture card, another via the 1080, another via the Razer rip saw that I have right over here uh, that's connected via USB 3, and then I could add a fourth camera via a webcam option that I have as well. That would allow me to stream uh, in a way that I've done when I've done live streams before where I've done builds and allow me to have multiple cameras set up that I can easily tap the keyboard to switch between in order to give myself a view of one thing or the other. Uh, the final thing that I wanted to do, and I'm probably not going to get there at least the way I wanted, uh, just this is again based on my testing, was to use XSplit Broadcaster to capture 4K from my camera and get that set up for our live stream, awesome hardware that we do every Tuesday, so I can start streaming that in 4K because I've got the capabilities, I should go ahead and start streaming in 4K. But that's not gonna work, I'm just gonna tell you guys right up front, uh, the 4K capture with the uh, XSplit software just doesn't work in any way, shape, or form uh, with these cards at least. I'm sure there's ways to do it, maybe I'll figure it out eventually, but not today. So I'm gonna skip that one, and I'll focus on the other two configurations. So I've got this set up out in my dining room one more time, and that's mainly because it's super, super hot here in California. We're experiencing heat wave in the southwest, but uh, just to run over my configuration, because I have it kind of duplicating what would be set up out in the garage. My main camera is right here, Panasonic Lumix GH5. It can output in 4K via the uh, HDMI 2.0 output that's got over there. It can actually do 422, 10-bit uh, 4K, uh, which is pretty nice. Although, uh, as you may have seen in my original video, that's very challenging to capture, um, at least when it captures in RAW and I've been dabbling with some options as far as compressing that video or getting it so uh, that when it is captured it's actually a little bit more usable. Now the main camera plugs in up here in the input on the uh, Decklink Mini 4K and then uh, you can see down here below I have the um, Intensity Pro which does uh, 1080 up to 1080 60. I've labeled again all the inputs and outputs on all those so I can tell which is which. So first camera goes in here, second camera will potentially go into the 1080 slot. And that would be my trusty GH4, so I can plug this in as a secondary camera. And then um, if I really needed a third camera, again, I've got my uh, Razer Ripsaw down here, and this can do 1080-60 and it connects via USB 3.0, so it's external. Um, so that, at least for now, I could plug in with this third camera I have. This is just a, a camcorder, but it does HDMI 1080 out, so I can set it up. What I'll probably uh, do really want to do is, is get my other GH4 repaired. Uh, the, the HDMI out on that so I can do all three really high qu quality cameras and that would be pretty nice. If I wanted to add a fourth camera, uh, I do have the webcam option. Uh, I probably would only do that in a very specific situation where I need to be able to cut over to a close-up of something. But that is how I could have four cameras all connected up to the system at the same time and then I can use the software of course to switch between them if I want to. Uh, finally, for audio, I have my H6 going right now. Of course, I have a soundboard over in the garage where I actually have things set up, but it is USB connected, so basically it's serving the same 
general purpose. Uh, I also popped out a couple of the, the, the two 4 terabyte drives that I had in there because I've decided that I want to put in fresh drives. I have a couple of those on order. I was hoping they'd arrive today by now, but they haven't yet. That's okay though, I've still got the SSDs, so those are perfectly fine for getting things up and running. Other than that, um, I, I just got a couple monitors good to go. Uh, the one on the left is 4K, so I can actually view stuff in 4K. Uh, so let's test out some of the configurations. So you'd think with a nice capture computer, I wouldn't just be pointing a camera at the screen. No, let's see if we can do better than that. Here's OBS. I'm going to use OBS to just capture the 4K monitor on the left, and I'm going to hit start recording. And now maybe, maybe we can cut to that at certain times. So step one here was going to be to use Adobe Premiere and see if I could capture directly from that. Adobe actually does have a, a capture function. It's available here. Uh, you can use it with a bunch of different devices. There's a device control option that pops up. You can go to settings and you can tell it's... Uh, I can even tell it to use the Blackmagic Capture option that's in here. But I spent literally a couple hours going through pretty much every setting I could find with this, looking up forums, trying to track down any information that I could, and basically I can't. If you want to use a capture device to capture directly to Adobe Premiere Pro, then you're probably going to have to go with one of the more expensive like fully licensed and tested options, um, or talk to Blackmagic because I couldn't figure it out. Maybe they can, um, but that's okay. I have other options. So as you may have seen in the original testing video, this is the Blackmagic Media Express software that comes with it, and it has a login capture function. And as you can maybe see when I pop over here, it is capturing, yay! I can actually see the image coming from my GH5, and I can see me recording myself holding a camera which is kind of weird, but that's okay. Now for Media Express, I can pull up a menu that will allow me to choose the project video format and the capture format. And this capture format is a thing that I was able to mess around with a little bit in order to get myself a, well, let's see, a, a more ideal uh, raw captured file. I decided on AVI 10-bit YUV was the option that I should go with, basically because that's uh, the same thing that's coming out of my camera. And then from there I can choose which capture folder to go to and that kind of thing. I'm using this in tandem with Adobe in order to capture to a watch folder, uh, and then I can use the Adobe Media Encoder software, which I'm loading up right now over here, and that will allow me to, well, it watches the folder and any files that pop up in that folder it will automatically re-encode. I can then have it re-encode those over to this folder which I've made, which is labeled Joe's Share Folder. That would be for my editor. And then once they pop into there, they should automatically, if I have BitTorrent Sync set up right, start transferring over to him. Now there is an intermediary step that I haven't quite figured out yet, and that is that when I'm capturing with the Media Express software uh, into the Watch folder, uh, it actually doesn't immediately start to re-encode it. So I might need to actually set it to go into a folder and then have that copy somewhere else. I think it has something to do with, uh, with Premiere or with uh, Media Encoder trying to do an encode, but the file's locked because it's still being written to because it's being recorded at the time. That's my assumption for what's, what's causing that not to work. But it's just a single step. Uh, for the time being, I can manually drop the files into the watch folder when needed, and then Adobe Media Coder will re-encode them, and then they can pop into the shared folder, and then again, BitTorrent Sync should immediately start transferring it over to my editor, Joe, which is pretty awesome. Now, with, uh, with Media Encoder, I'm actually trying to copy those captured files uh, into Cineform, and Cineform is a part of, a part of QuickTime. So basically in the export settings here, uh, once you choose QuickTime from the drop down menu, you can choose one of these uh, GoPro Cineform options. Again, I chose YUV 10-bit because I'm not actually uh, using a 12-bit source. Uh, but with YUV 10-bit capturing at 4K, there's actually five different quality settings you can choose from, low, medium, high, film scan, and film scan 2. So if I use preset 4, it's about 500 megabits per second. If I use preset 3, it's 400 megabits per second. Uh, and if I use preset 2, it's 330 megabits per second. Preset 1 brings it all the way down to 250. That's still pretty, pretty high. If you consider my GH5 over there, that captures 4K 10-bit uh, files, 4 to 2, uh, at 150 megabits per second. So um, basically, I think what I'm going to do is instead of capturing all of this stuff at 4K, I'm actually going to transcode it down to 1080 um, with the higher quality setting. I'll mess with some of those and see what kind of bit rates I can get. This is all based on Linus Media Group's uh, testing and stuff that they've been doing actually for a good year or two now. Um, but even with 1080 Cineform, 
uh, it can actually be rendered at 4K with um, pretty much no impact on the quality. So I'm going to give some of those a test and uh, we'll figure out which, which kind of works best. And I'm definitely going to need a little bit more time to invest in that to, to get things going. Alright, if things weren't complicated enough as it already was, I have now plugged in two additional cameras. So uh, one important thing about capturing from cameras like this, especially if you're going to do a live stream or something, is making sure they can be always on. So I actually have AC adapters for all these uh, going in that just, it's like a battery adapter that plugs into one of these. Got them on eBay. So GH5 has that going there, and then uh, a nice thin red mirror HDMI cable which is going over to the back of the system where I already showed you guys. Uh, next up we have my GH4 which has now been plugged in. Again, I'm not really worrying about what these are pointed at or anything like that, I'm just getting stuff set up. Same AC adapter going in for that one, and then uh, HDMI out going from that again back to the back of the system into the capture back there. Down here on the floor, because I ran out of tripods, is the other, just this this poor little camcorder, uh, which also has an AC adapter, so that's just plugged into the wall. And then again, HDMI out of that, going up into the rip saw, and then that, again, USB 3, back into the computer. So let's see if these all play nice together. So just getting OBS set up with my capture devices, and here's a nice thing. Drop down here lists both Blackmagic devices when I choose black magic device from the capture devices settings. So I can see my Intensity Pro, I can see my Decklink uh, uh, Mini Recorder 4K, and here it's just a matter of setting up for the exact same settings that I was using uh, that the camera is outputting, which would be 216024, uh, we'll leave it at 8-bit YUV, and hopefully that will work. Alright guys, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I know this one's been a little off the cuff, but I had to get this system up and running and into production since it's a production machine that I'm going to be using probably on a daily basis. Thank you so much for watching this video though. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.